And Telly Savalas is the Hollywood detective here on Central in half an hour. First, though, Bob Mills is in bed with Medina. I don't get aerated. Pops night again. I always go out, right? Here's my problem. I always go out. My celebrity friends phone me up and say, Millsy, come out, right? And I go out. I'm as good as gold, right? I have a couple of snowballs and a curry. I'm as good as gold. <laughs> but then I always have to go somewhere where I know they have a lock-in, right? And I have a Bacardi too many and a little bit of Advocat and I start mouthing it. I was out the other night with Patrick Stewart, right? Sandra Bullock, Sharon Stone, right? Perfectly nice people, but and I'm fine, then I have the extra snowball and I go to Sharon Stone, here. Oh no, Bird thinks you're a right tart. <laughs> she didn't like that. Sandra Bullock, I didn't have to mention that, here, where I come from, Bullock, that's a kind of cow. <laughs> and Paddy sure, you know on the telly he's all nice and suave, and, uh, but you try saying to him, here, you know that William Shatner, he was much better than you. Ah, oh, <laughs> he gets the right um. I'll tell you what I've got, right? I've got some fantastic stuff. Discovered this, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. You know, sometimes you go out and you're a bit like, you try and be nice, but you meet people and you go, hey, what's your name? So, shut up. Get me a drink, <laughs> right? Seriously, you get some of this and you just spray it on you like a deodorant and it works a treat. Look, look. It's a charm. <laughs> just, you spray it on and you start going, I say, would you care for a Dubonnet? Oh. <laughs> Absolutely lovely. I've got some Welsh people coming around tomorrow. Uh, the Welsh people are coming around, and I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a barbecue for them, right? And I saw the price of meat, so I thought, never mind about that, I'll give them some of these, look. A nice hamster burger. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'll be all right there, Welsh people, they'll be going, all right, protein and everything, then. <laughs> oh, fantastic, that it is. Oh, lovely. Oh, run up the ronda. Uh, but I'll tell you what I am complaining about, right? I'm not, please, I'm not a difficult person, but I bought this garlic, right? Very, very nice. Seasons all your food. Very tasty. But I've left the bin bags down Wednesday night. Well, the bin men come Thursday, and you've got to have the bin bags out Wednesday night, or you miss them. So I've said to the garlic, will you put the bin bags out? Come now Thursday. No, not put out. So I've missed them for a week, and that annoys me. There's a load of shoes at the bottom of the stairs. I just said to the garlic, do us a favour, garlic. Will you clear the shoes up? Clear them up. Come down next day. Oh, I like that. The shoes are still there. Just little things. Because basically, it's very, very tasty garlic, but as you, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, you see that? Very, very lazy garlic. <laughs> <laughs> very lazy garlic, and I don't like it. Here's another amazing thing I've discovered my, what my microwave can do, and I know you only live from week to week to find out stuff my microwave can do. Look, this is the latest. You take some of that, look, you know what that is? See what it is? It's corn. Ho, 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 green giant. <laughs> That's the song for the younger people, eh? Uh, and a picture like that. Right? That's me, about three weeks ago. <laughs> so you get a picture of a bloke like that. Bum, 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 big beef coat of a bloke. And some, some, some corn. Put it in like that. It, it, that goes in there. That goes in there. Bish, bish, bish. Bosh, bosh, bosh. Start. <laughs> and there you go. Nice bit of corned beef. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic, that is. Fantastic. Oh, here's a picture I found in the attic. This is me when I used to be in the Marx Brothers. Remember the Marx Brothers? We used to make all them silent films. All dead now, me brothers. But I'm, I'm still going. Look, here we are. There's Chico, Groucho, Harpo, uh, Sumo. That's me. <laughs> Lovely, most We've got Animal Crackers, Duck Soup. We made all them films. Fantastic. And here's a book that I got. In fact, it's a book that I've written myself. And I've had it put out just to, to you know, to show people uh, how to do it. What I've said, what the book says, basically, it says all you have to do is lead a very, very quiet life, 
not have any girlfriends, and every now and again go, uh -huh. I got myself a walk in Tokyo. Basically, what I'm saying is it's easy to play Cliff Richard. <laughs> <laughs> so all you got to do is live a very quiet life, not have any girlfriends, and just occasionally go, I got myself a walk in... And you're, it's easy to play Cliff Richard. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> obviously you're very, very lucky to find me in, because uh, normally this time of night I'd be uh, out and about. Right, this is where I used to play when I grew up, right? It, this is why it was so miserable. So dull, isn't it? Look at this. This was our, our recreation ground. St. Alfred's Recreation Ground. Look, a flower garden play area where you go swings, roundabouts. Uh, golf not permitted. We weren't allowed to play golf in our recreation ground, right? Because uh, we might have woke people up, look. <laughs> this, is it. this is where I grew up. You wonder why I've turned out like I have. This is where we used to come and play. Come on, kids, let's go and have a kick about. Uh, get two gravestones and make posts. Because all you have to do, right, is lead a very quiet life. <laughs> Not have any girlfriends, do a lot of work for charity, and then occasionally just go, I got myself a crying. <laughs> And you'll find it's, it's easy to play Cliff Richard. <laughs> right. Right, here's uh, another one of the films that I make, right? This is a film about police brutality, ladies and gentlemen, because you tell the truth, tell the truth, and the youngsters will listen. You've got to go against the man, against the forces of fascist brutality. Right. Terrible film. The police intervene in a domestic dispute, destined to create a mountain of work for them and the duty solicitor. They arrest a man accused of pestering his ex-wife. Right, as well, your presumption, or especially for your job, right? Up, up in the car for now. We're going to, because I arrest you, we're going to run you down to the police station. I'll do that in a moment. I'm going to sort everything out, but I need some details off you, then I'll give you a right. So if you need a doctor, I'll sort one out for you, all right? Now just come. Right, what are you about to see? <laughs> Is this man who's saying, right, you've brought me here, you've had my arms up my back, right, you've hurt my arm, you've had my arm up my back. Look, copper, why don't you go the whole hog, huh? Come on, just go all the way. Now, will you hear, please? I've got you arrested. Before you do anything, I take my oath. Right? Now take my eye out. Right? I've got the, I've got the Peace Complaints Commission looking into you f***ers down here because you've done it once before. Go on. Go on. Take my eye out. <laughs> the police. Oh, police, you know, they don't mind having a little bit of a ruck with someone. Even they're going, oh, no thanks. <laughs> what if we don't? At the I'm, I'm not drunk. I'm not, I have had no drink. I'm not I drunk. I've had no drink. I've had no drink on me. That's my favourite. <laughs> so indignant. How dare you say I'm drunk? I'm not drunk. If you think I'm drunk, put the breath on me. <laughs> well, put the breath on me. <laughs> Do you think I'm under the uh, influence of alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway, he is having a good mouth. Because I'm known here, you wouldn't <laughs> believe. Look, I was walking home. Look at. Please don't. Please don't. Oh, please don't do that. And then I'm blind. You can see. You're going back in the cell, huh? all right? Oh, oh, well, no, yeah, yeah, because, because you don't like my CNTM. Come on. No, not because we don't like, because you've just taken out an organ and thrown it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why, right. so, oh, <laughs> he looks keen to get involved, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Stop messing about. <laughs> the police definition of removing your eye and throwing it out. Oh, will you stop messing about? 
Instead of taking off an ear and frizzing, oh, st dude, stop skylarking now. Uh, bless. Uh, there's another film I made. Anyone remember Chris Sell? Remember Chris Sell? I don't know. Maybe some of the uh, more mature people in the audience remember Chris Sell. He uh, he had a little stint with uh, Esther Ranson, if memory serves me correct. And I used to make TV programs with him. And this is uh, this is one that we we done together. That was the days when music was music. <laughs> All right, never mind your jungle hip-hop rap. My investigation this week involves pretty girls, money, and the heady world of glitzy fashion models. Two young girls from Essex wrote to tell me how... <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> they might be perfectly nice, well-brought-up young ladies. Their bids to become models have ended in tears. And this is what I found out. Sweet dreams are made of these. Who am I to disagree? They travel everywhere, they earn a fortune, they meet the famous and of... That'll be one of the girls from Essex then, will it? Of course, they look great. That'll be one no of the others. So many girls like Denise Willisey dream... So, these are the two girls from Essex and that's Denise Willisey, is it? Um, all right. You saw yourself... Ah, no, because... <laughs> If you don't shut up, I'm not going to play it. <laughs> Denise has seen those others and thought, I could do that. I'm going to have a go at that. What sort of future did you see in front of you? Bright lights and everything. <laughs> Which, incidentally, I don't like to plug things, but it is the uh, title of my autobiography, which is currently on sale. Bright lights and everything. <laughs> You can call a girl like Denise naive, but she really believed she had a chance of a fairy tale career as a top fashion model. There are a lot of starry-eyed hopefuls like her. <laughs> Joanna from Essex also wanted to be a fashion. There's Joanna from Essex now. <laughs> Shut up, because she reads Vogue. She reads Vogue, so she's seen the look. She knows what the look is, and she's obviously spending it and got herself sorted to. So she's seen it and thought, well, I really there's the mirror, there's the Vogue. Oh, well, I could do that. No trouble at all. Model. So she answered. <laughs> No! <laughs> now, I'm going to do that again, all right? And just, please. It's also wanted to be a fashion model. So, she answered an ad in the local paper and went along to the Davis Model Agency in Leighton. She was thrilled when they said she had potential. <laughs> potential is a very loose word, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? I'm potentially the thinnest man in this building. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's, you have to give people some leeway. The Davis Model Agency is here in glamorous Leighton. Now, this is my favourite bit, right? What, what was the glamorous meant in there? Horrible sarky, what it is here in glamorous. <laughs> but then, unfortunately, Mr. Sneaky Sir, it all goes wrong for him, look. This model agency is here in glamorous Leighton High Road. But it's not glamorous at all, is it? Except in the very next shot. We rang them and asked them to give us a film. <laughs> Big roller going. <laughs> in fact, Mr. Davis, the owner of the agency, did initially agree to talk to us. He said the money girls paid was their contribution to the costs of publicising them. You. <laughs> I remember him now. I remember him. Fantastic man, right? Listen to him, all right? Just listen. You can't get anywhere without some form of what we call a flyer, oh, Z flyer, card, Z index card, card right. or a yeah. model book. All right. Now, we, in actual fact, put a lot of money towards that. Put a lot of money that. in there. But as it happens, they also have to put something. That's the way it goes, and they put the £150 for that. All right, fair enough. Can't argue with that, right? But so, you, you, Romford, Ilford, would you say? Maybe as far out as Bexley Heath, right? Until suddenly, <laughs> suddenly realises that the camera's on him. <clears throat> it's going to be on television. Maybe the people at the BBC will see it. And turns into uh, Roger Roehampton Ponsonby Smythe. <laughs> he also said that the agency made it clear it couldn't guarantee anyone work. They have to sign a form to the, to the effect which they do, a registration form that states this does not guarantee work. They read that before they sign it, and I have them all in my file, so, you know, it's as simple as that. But we do get work for people, okay?
Now, you see, this is exactly the kind of thing we're talking about on casualty. You see this? Look at that. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. Beautiful drink of water provided for, for the young ladies and gentlemen who work in, in, in the building. Absolutely lovely. God's own vodka. But what about this? What about you get somebody a little bit heavy-handed? No, no. You see? Over it goes. Down high and up. And look at the water. You see? Down here. And look at that. All the deadliest combinations known to me. Water and electricity. Now, you see, that's going to... That's going to ignite, it's going to fuse, it's going to go up the wallpaper, whole building alight. And I think not just us uh, casualty chaps, I think we'd have the young ladies and lasses from London's Burning getting involved there as well. Bit of a shout for Blue Watch into the bargain. Absolutely fantastic. I think you're looking at a two-parter with that. I really do. <laughs> fantastic. Right, thanks for coming back. I'll tell you what you've done here. You've joined me in uh, Hollywood Corner, da -da 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 -da, where I keep all my gifts, all my little keepsakes, I like to call them keepsakes. Uh, from my friends in the world of, uh, uh, of the arts, drama, entertainment, music, that sort of thing. And this came through the post just this, uh, this week from a very, very good friend, uh, Mr. Kevin Costner, the very well-known motion picture actor. He sent me this. I don't know if you can see it. It's a thing of beauty. It's a, look, he said, ah, 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 well, no, because you've got the wand off and by all means. But now, if you keep on it, please, please, because I have to turn it now and you'll see quite clearly, look, to a little baby dolphin as well. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. And Kevin wrote me a little note. It was quite sweet. He said, what I've done here is I've married up two of the films that you were an inspiration for me on. Because what you've got is you've got dances. You've got dances, but not with wolves, but with the animals from Waterworld. So you've got dances with dolphins, which I thought was absolutely lovely. And what I've done is married it up with one of his films in that I've got a tin cup that I use as a bin and I'm going to chuck it in it when I finish it. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what I have got for you. Here, have a look at this, right? This is another one of them, uh, them programmes I make. Ooh, me old bones. Them programmes that I make when I go out with the, uh, with the police, my mates in the police. We're going to visit Blackpool. We all love Blackpool. I would do like to be beside the seaside. Uh, that's a song rather than a sentiment. Uh, and these are, <laughs> these are lads who are going out. And the people they're nicking here are people who prey on the holiday makers and what they're, they're unlicensed traders, allegedly. <laughs> Oh, that's... What are we up to? PC Frith from Blackpool Police Station. PC it's, a... it's an offence to sell or offer to offer for sale that can't fit goods. Now we believe those videos that you're selling over there can't fit goods. Now, it's an offence to sell them on the street, and as such, you're going to be arrested for it. You don't have to say anything, but it may. Uh, the question uh, in my mind at this point was, uh, all right. He doesn't look like the lad from Blockbusters, but you don't know. <laughs> it, how do you know they're counterfeit? How, they might, they may well not be counterfeit videos. Uh, who's to say? From your defence, do not mention when questioned, since which you later lie in the court. Please Maybe that's a bit of a giveaway. Bad Boys, here, starring Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. <laughs> where it hasn't quite got on the edge of the photocopier. Uh, this is the other thing, right, that I discovered about Blackpool, which absolutely amazed me. And I have to say, they went up in my respect. Uh, the police forces throughout the country have got... The, the, basically, they all do the same job, but they've got little variations. And one in Blackpool is this, right? If you've uh, got someone, uh, a relative, or yourself even, and you need to get up at a specific time, you can phone the police uh, a few hours in advance and book a wake-up call. And they will come round your house and uh, uh, deliver it. They will wake you up. Sergeant <laughs> and PC are on night patrol when they're called to a domestic incident. Who are you? This man has called the police after a dispute with his brother. And the dispute is that his brother said, wake me up at nine o'clock, so I've got to go on the night shift. And he can't wake him up, so he's, he's called on what they call Operation Sleepyhead. <laughs> we'll deal with this, sir. Wake up, Chris. Chris! <laughs> 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 I'm alright now. <laughs> just make a nice cup of tea now and I'll be fine. <laughs> now, in fact, they're not, they just made that up. They are, in fact, I don't know if you recognise them. Uh, they are Christopher and Nigel Gallagher. They are, the, they are they're the cousins of Liam and Noel. They're starting their own group uh, called uh, Just Sand. And uh, they, they've got a lot of the attributes of their Gallagher cousins. Uh, this, is, this is Christopher here. Nigel, 
Christopher's like the spokesman, he's like the, the, the Noel. Nigel doesn't have a lot going for him except the ability to say the word oi. Very, very good at that. Come on, Benny on. Steady on. Calm down. Police. 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 In true Gallagher fashion, he's about to give him one of the greatest insults you can. All I've done. Oh. You won't get your haircut. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> hey, want to get your get haircut? <laughs> I'm mad for it, mate. Gone to barbers. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, we're supposed to be. Yeah, 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 and they he's fighting talk. Here's my, uh, here's my other favourite lot, right? These are the undercover people, the undercover police, uh, the licensing unit at Blackpool Police Station. Their job is to go out and find any pubs that are serving underage drinkers. Right, ladies and gentlemen, the intention this evening is to carry out um, initially plain clothes visit, which obviously you four will do. <laughs> yes, okay, fine. Um... <laughs> Well, you know the job better than we do. Uh, to the upstairs level of the premises known as the counting house, Talbot Square. All we're interested in is the first floor. What's happening is, um, all the studenty types... That's you. <laughs> you know who you are, you studenty types. In fact, all the people he's talked about have just gone... Does he mean me? <laughs> I could get my hands off this shelf and I'd kill him. <laughs> Students. I go in, in the upstairs part early evening. We have carried out some plain clothes observations up there, myself and Ian, a few months ago. <laughs> him and Ian. He went on a plain clothes shout at the pub with a student design. Imagine. I bet he had a big Afghan coat on and a tie dye suit and a piece and some flared loons, didn't he? And stack your shit and walked around going, hey man, this is really gear. <laughs> Don't you know you're riding on the Marrakesh Express? <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you what, I've got loads to do. I've got to shoot off, I've got to go and see uh, Kevin Costens over again and all that, and I'll have a nice chat with him and it'll be all lovely until he says, uh, Bob, I don't like you when you're being bullshit with me. How am I being bullshit with you? <laughs> Please? I'll see you later. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Bob, tonight's show just just didn't have it. it weren't up to speed. Definitely not the best by a long no, shot. I think you're bang out of order as it goes, sweet. Oh, I thought it was brilliant. I thought the way I'd come out, right, done a gags, straight in, bish, 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 bosh, 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 fantastic. And a bit of the old microwave, wonderful. And all the little props, a big laughs, they loved it. The old Billy Bunters, fantastic. Absolutely brilliant, I thought. And I thought the way I actually <laughs> took the tape and put it in the play that was in, sport and back and forth, made little go, was absolutely super. I remember very, very many years ago in Monte Carlo, Bunty said to me, Bobby said you should do a show uh, where you play the tapes and make people laugh. And uh, if we have had some laughs, we have had some laughs, if you'd like to check the files, okay. Um, <laughs>